I am speaking with John Phelan. I'm the founder and CEO of Argus Insights. What do you guys do? We measure consumer experiences in a way to help our clients figure out how to surprise and delight people in the right ways to drive market share. So one of the things you're very much focusing on is the wearable space, and uh, in particular, you were looking at things like, like Fitbit and Apple were doing, or saying for that matter, since Apple's product still hasn't come out. Uh, I was very intrigued by two things that you talked about where there's sort of you can lose the customers, and that is the actual unboxing and that moment of three months after that you're not sort of keeping them engaged with the product. So walk me through that. So if you think about any new product that disrupts people's lives, they have to change their behaviors to bring that into their life. And you want to make that disruption as small as possible. But a lot of times people that develop new products fail to remember that and set up all these kind of barriers to adoption, barriers to learning how to actually use a device. And if you don't do that correctly in the wearable space, people will reject it like a bad kidney within minutes of opening the box. Um, the second part is, is that long term, and we see this, we call this a sock drawer problem for the presentation today, but over time, if we don't continually refresh the experience or set those habits of usage into the user, like we use the smartphone every day to make calls or check snack for information on the internet or go search Google, things of that sort, wearables have not yet achieved that same type of stickiness. And all the experiments to date to try to do that haven't really moved us beyond kind of the three to six month point. Um, even gamification uh, basis has done a lot of gamifying habit development, but they ran out of levels after about three months, and that's when people stopped using it. And so it's incumbent not only to get the beginning part down, but also to make sure that all the way through, even beyond that three month mark, that barrier of, oh yeah, I'm bored, um, where novelty has to turn into utility. and. That's where the real challenges are, but also the real opportunities. For the companies that unpack that piece, the market's theirs. So have you seen any patterns and formulas that have worked really well, and in, in, in on both ends? Let's talk about both ends. We'll start with, let's just first start with the unboxing. What are some patterns and formulas you've seen work very well from purchase to use very quickly? The, the biggest thing I think is, is how do you engage the user right away in a narrative about what they want to do with the device um, and then give them the steps. It's almost like, like the, uh, the level one of a game and how do you show them how to use the device to achieve those one or two key features that actually drive value in their life. To have a manual or, or a significant PDF they have to download that shows them how to configure the radio or the font size on the watch face, all that kind of stuff, ends up being esoteric. And maybe the things that are important to you as a developer, but they don't create value in that first 30 seconds for the user. And so you really have to guide them through you know, no more than three different things to really help them understand how to do that. So, for example, with a, a fitness band, how do you count steps? You turn it on. It's like, how do you charge it? So you've got to make sure you have power. And then how do you start counting steps? It's that easy. Then later, you have to teach them how to do the sync and all those kinds of pieces and set up the account, et cetera. But how do you minimize the number of steps they have to go through to get that first novel, awesome experience? Later, I haven't seen yet anyone who's really nailed the whole habit-forming piece yet, partly because... You know, I have to agree with you because I'm, uh, well, no longer a Fitbit user because I just lost my second one. Um, but. There was no doubt about when I first got the Fitbit, the number of badges that myself and my wife got were tons and they were right. fun. Right. And then they disappeared. Yes. <laughs> yeah, because most people who enter the wearables market think they're in the hardware business. They don't realize they're actually in the experience business or the content business. But that's the way we drive that stickiness. The game can't end. It has to be like a marathon of Monopoly on steroids because no one's going to get boardwalk until they die. And so that's the key with this stuff is that how do you build and it's a challenge because the way the markets are set up today fitbits tried to charge for their features but everyone's and everyone's race to the bottom that typically happens in the stuff they're taking away the monthly charges and so how do you they have to find new business models to enable them to support that type of content generation and no one's quite figured that part out yet